For this week, the first non-parametric test that you're going to learn is a test to test the differences between two independent samples. So we use the example just now. So let's say I want to compare the weight of two types of apple, the red apple and green apple. So this is my research questions. Then I design my experiment for each of the type of apple. I sample a total of seven apple from the market. And then I measure the weight of each of these apple in kilogram. This is my experiment design. After that, I organize the data and then summarize the data. So just judging from the summary of the data and also the data that I've collected, do you think there's a significant difference between these two types of apple? It seems like the green apple is wet more than the red apple. However, as you can see from the post plot, the data seems skewed to one side. Okay. So it's very likely our data is not normally distributed. So before I choose and perform a statistical test, I need to test for the assumption. First, I have to perform a normality test as shown in the previous lecture and also perform the homogeneity of variance test. After I have performed the test for normality, the results show that both data set are, is not normally distributed because the p-value is smaller than 0.05. So we reject the null hypothesis, which we go for the authentic hypothesis. So that means that the data is not come from the population that is normally distributed. So in this case, we cannot use two sample t-tests. We need to use a non-parametric test. So the test we're going to use is man whitney u test. So as usual, the first step in the statistical testing is to define the hypothesis. As discussed in the last lectures, the statistical hypothesis for non-parametric tests is slightly different from the hypothesis in the parametric test. So in the non-parametric test, in this case, it's a man whitney u test, we're going to write a statement so the no hypothesis is the red and green apples are the same weight. And then the authentic hypothesis is the opposite. So the red and green apple are not the same weight. So in this case, you will not see the symbol of the parameter because this is a non-parametric test. For main we need you test, as usual, we need to get a critical value for u. So what we need to have is our alpha. So we need to determine our alpha. So the alpha here that we determine is 0 0.05. Whether this is a two-tail or one-tail test. So in this case, it's a two-tail test. And then we need to get the number of observation in each of the sample. So our N1 is 7 apple. N2 is also 7 apples in our second sample. Then after that, we can refer to the man with knee U table. So the table is separated into the one tail test table and also two tail test. So to get the value, what we need to do, we need to refer to the alpha. So in this case, it's two tail test. So we refer to the two-tail testing table. This is the N1 and this is the N2. So what you see here, the row is N2 and the column is N1. So our N1 is 7, our, our N2 is 7. So should be somewhere here. Okay. 
So this is the possible critical value. So our alpha is 0 0.05. So in this case, this is a 0 0.05. So we can take the, this value A as our critical value for the main Whitney U test. So there's one thing is very important for main Whitney U test. We will reject the null hypothesis when our test steady state, okay, our test steady state U, okay, is less than or equal to the critical value. So this is different from the parametric test that we have learned so far. So for parametric tests like t test or z test, we're going to reject the null hypothesis is if our test score is larger than the critical value. But in this case, for main Whitney U test, we're going to reject the null hypothesis if our test score is less than the critical value. After we have formulated our statistical hypothesis, set the criteria to get the critical value, the next step is to calculate the test score. So for main Whitney U test, as this is a non parametric test, so we're not going to use the parameter in the calculations. So that means that we will not calculate the mean and we do not need the standard deviation. So first, we need to rank the variable for both groups. Second, sum the rank for each of the two groups to get the R1 and R2. Calculate the U1 and U2. And then choose one of the value, which one is smaller as your test score. So this is the formula. So as you can see, there's no mean and standard deviation. So what we have here is N1, N2, which is our sample size for the first sample and also sample size for the second sample. Okay. And then we have the R1, which is the sum of the rank for the first sample. To calculate the U2, we use the, the number of observation for each sample and also use the value of sum of the rank for the second sample. After we calculate the U1 and U2, we will choose the smaller one, which one is smaller to become our test score. So next slide, we're going to show you step by step how to do the calculations. First step is to rank the sample together. Smallest value, we give them the rank 1, then follow, follow by the second smallest value. So which one is the second for smallest value? Okay, I think you have found it, so it's, not, it's this one, 2. So we're not going to look only at sample 1, but we look at uh, all the number together for both sample. After the 1.4, the next value is this 2, right? So in this case, we have the type rank. Okay, so this 2 value is the same. We cannot decide which one is 3, which one is 4. So in this case, we just sum the rank. So this one is 3 and 4. So 3 plus 4 divided by 2. Okay, then we get 3.5, 3.5. So the next one is 5, the next one, so you have to check both sides, okay, so the next one is this one, number 6, after that, so the 7, the rank 7 is not belong to this 8, but it's this one, okay, so this is number 7, we have 2 apple, with the same value. So in this case, we cannot assign which one is 7 and 8, but we know that the next one is 9. So the rank of this apple is 7 plus 8 divided by 2. So the value is 7.5. So we keep doing this until we have rank all the data. So after that, the next step is to 
sum all the data. So this is the rank for our first sample. So we just sum all the rank and get the sum of rank. From, for second sample, we do the same thing. We will get the second value, which is 75. After we have the R, then we can start to calculate the U1 and U2. First, we need to get the N. So the N for the first sample is 7. The N for the second sample also 7. So it's a number of observations. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. To calculate the U1, we just put the value of the sample size. And then the sum of rank for the first sample, which is 30. We just do the symbol mathematics, then we can get our U1, which is 47. So we'll do the same thing for the U2. Just be careful, pay attention on the formula. So the formula is slightly different. So in this case, it doesn't really matter because the sample size is the same, but in the case where the sample size is different, then the final result will make a lot of the difference. So similarly, we just put the sample size okay, in our formula and also put in the sum of rank for second sample. Just solve the mathematics, we will get the value of 2 for the U2. So the next thing is to decide which one will be our test score. So the test score, the U, is the smaller of U1 and U2. So in this case, the U2 is smaller. So 2 is smaller than 47. So our U is 2. So our test score is 2. So after we have performed the statistical test, the next step is to compare the test score with the critical value. The critical value for this test is 8. And our test score is 2. So our test score is smaller than our critical value. That means that we're going to reject the no hypothesis. So our conclusion is we do have sufficient evidence to conclude that the green and red apple differ in red. Make sure you be careful because this is diff quite different from what we have done in the t-test and z-test. We reject the no hypothesis when our test score is smaller than the critical value.